that a business is nothing more or less than a series of processes. That's all it is. And all we need to do is not focus on the business, but focus on the processes. Now, who are the people that were in Doug's session today? That, that, you know, that, that I, that, is everybody back? I think, yes, you are. Would it be okay with you if I just repeated some of what uh, we, we, we shared with the guys? Would that, would that be okay? Would the rest of you be okay? Because they, these kind of guys, they loved it. Is that okay? And if you've seen me before, you've never heard me do this. So is that okay? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> you are now about to find out, you are now going to find out why I use slides, because I'm terrible writing on the boards, right? Uh -huh. So let's talk about a process, or a process as you would have it uh, say. And so one of the things that every single one of us has, well, some of us don't have it, but we damn well should have it, is a process that describes, for example, what happens when we meet a prospect. How do we take that prospect and turn that prospect into a customer or a client or whatever? Um, and I, I want to have a look at that. But also, by the way, the, these pro processes are very, very, very fine. Today, uh, Chris, remember when you were recording the thing and then your contractor called you? Yes. And you were saying to me, oh, should I take the call or not? And I said, take the call. And I said, I, I, wanted, I want you to take the call because, what did I say? I wanted, to hear how I, I wanted to hear how you answer the phone. Now, why did I want to hear, by the way, the way she answered it was, hello, Juan? <laughs> that, was the way, that was the way she answered it, which is actually probably not a good thing. But anyway, that was the way she answered it. Now, why would I want to listen to the way in which she answers the phone? Because that is a crucial process. It's a crucial process, right? And amazingly enough, some people who have cell phones now as the major kind of incoming thing for their business, this is going to surprise you. Some people who have cell phones, and this is where their customers call, this is how they answer it. Ready? Cell phone rings. Hello? You have got to be kidding me. You have seriously got to be kidding me that you have aspirations of creating a great business and you have a process that allows you to answer the phone like, hello? You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I'm getting passionate about that. I'm really getting passionate about that. Because you must not have that process. You must not. Now you're all looking at me really weird now because you're thinking, oh, Paul's obviously very tired and he's getting angry and he's taking it out on us, right? Well, in some ways, yes. <laughs> in some ways, yes. But what I can tell you is, once you, once you figure this out, so for example, it doesn't matter even if I know who's calling. If I, you know, with the call, I will always answer the phone exactly the same way, which is, if it called, if it called right now, I would answer it, because obviously it's not a company one in this case. And I would say, Good evening, this is Paul Dunn. That's what I would say. If it rang in the morning, I'd say, good morning, this is Paul Dunn. If I was answering your phone in your office, I would say, good morning, Frameworks, this is Paul Dunn. If I was a receptionist at Frameworks, I would say, good afternoon, Frameworks, this is Sally Johnson. And I would do that. Now, why would I do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Because I don't care who, the, who it is on that phone. I don't, I have no, it doesn't matter. The fact that someone else is on the phone is not going to change my process. Does everybody understand that? It's just not. Right? Because I don't want to think about what I have to say. What I want to think about is how the other person is, is reacting. Does that, does that make sense to you? This is a very British because and that's what we do. But the best part when you do that in America, I need to say this. But I'll answer and I'll say, hello, this is Claire Lardner. Is Claire there? Yeah. They're not even listening. Now listen again, listen again. Just say what you just said. Well, if you call my house, I'll say, hi, it's Claire Lardner. Okay, now listen very carefully, very, very carefully, right? I said, break everything into fine processes. Listen again. Hello? This is Claire Lardner. No, 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 no. That's the only time you've said this is. Okay, uh, hello. No, I said that. This is no, you didn't. You listened to the recording. You said, hello, it's Claire Lardner. Oh, it's, yeah, okay. Is there a difference between it's and this is? Yes, there is. Because when the person hears this is, we know that what happens is their brain goes, and it happens in a nanosecond. 
their brain goes, oh, I'm about to hear a name, right? Because after all, I'm not going to say, good afternoon, Frameworks, this is Tuesday. I don't think I'm going to say that, right? So, 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 so the this is triggers it, the it's doesn't, right? So the, the brain goes, oh, name's about to come. Now, it doesn't happen in every culture, but in the, this culture and in most Western countries, not all, but in most Western countries, when they hear this is, they know a name is going to come, and then you, you make sure it does. This is Sally Johnson, not this is Sally, how am I to help you, but this is Sally Johnson. And what happens is, and we now know what's going on, they're in the brain, there are things called mirrored neurons. And what actually happens is when we hear that this is, which gets us ready to hear it, and then we hear first name, last name, have a guess how in the majority of cases we respond. Guys, that's not too hard. We say, oh, hi Claire, it's John Smith, and I was wondering if... Right? right. right? Now the moment somebody says, even if it's the receptionist or director of first impressions, as I believe they should be called, but in any event, good afternoon Frameworks, this is Sally Johnson. Oh, hi Sally, it's Fred Smith, and I was wondering if... The moment, what have, what have we just got? Connection. 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 We know it's Mr. Smith. Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. Really nice of you to call. Let me get clear for you if that was what was going on. Do you see this? I mean, I know it's like, it's almost like if I could use the word, um, no, I, shan't, I won't use that word. Uh, <laughs> let me just say detailed. Uh, but, but detail is actually all there is. And... I don't want to think about what I have to say. As I said, I want to think about what's going on over there. So these things are very interesting. So let me get to this whole thing about a sales process. Now, what happens is, who can I imagine? Uh, this is Terry. Terry, of course it is. Hi, Terry. Hi. <laughs> now, Terry, um, I want you to be the prospect, if that's OK. OK. And I am selling, oh, actually, I'm selling Frameworks stuff, okay? And you're a buyer uh, at a hotel, right? And this is going to be our first meeting, right? Now remember, you're at a hotel. You have access, easy access, to things like tea and coffee and everything else, right? Just mm -hmm. remember that, okay? So I meet you for the very first time. By the way, the appointment time that we have set most likely is 10.50, okay? What, by the way, I know many of you know this, but why have we set 10.50? <laughs> Say again? If you're well, late for 11? Um, no. Because no. it registers. It, because it registers and you will get there. You will get there before that. And guess what? Terry has never had anybody, if she's a hotel planner, or you know, she's never had anybody make an appointment at 10.50. So straight away, what happens? Oh, this is different. This is different. It's a stand-up, right? So... We sit down and we sort of make, you know, rapport and all that kind of stuff. And most likely, particularly because you're in a hotel, you're going to say to me, would you like a... Coffee, tea. How many, how many people get that happening? You know, would you like tea or coffee? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whenever you hear that from here on in, please say, oh, no, 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 I'm really fine. But please, you go ahead if you'd like one. By the way, I've never seen anybody take that cup of coffee if I handle it like that. Now, the guys in the room this afternoon know why I say, I, oh no, please, you, you go ahead, I'm really fine. But you don't. So why would I refuse the cup of coffee? Or water, or whatever. Oh, you're so itching to tell the... Not to disrupt the sequence, possibly, yes. What else, why else? Distraction, possibly. Many people would say, it eases it. it, you know, it's kind of you're breaking bread together kind of thing. But there's a very good reason. Yes, your first name is? Miriam. Miriam. Thank you, Miriam. You owe something now? You owe something? That's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought about that. Oh. Yeah. Say again? You break away to go get the coffee. No, they would break away to get the coffee, perhaps. Yes, that's another thought. Yeah. Here's the reason. All of us at some point are going to ask for the order, 
right, at some point. And when I say ask for the order, ask to confirm the next. And what we know is, we, we know, did you get that there's a time, there's a right time when that buyer, if you like, is kind of ready to, do, do you know what I'm saying? So, what would you think happens if 30 minutes into this meeting, they say to you, oh, Chris, would you like that cup of coffee now? What is that a signal of? No, 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 the exact opposite. Yeah, it's, hey, kick around, I'm enjoying this. What you just got yourself is what is called a buying signal. How many people see that? Interesting, but if you take the first one, you're not going to get the second one. Do you, do you see that? <laughs> so anyway, by the way, even if you're busting for some caffeine, say no, right? So anyway, so, so let's quickly talk about the process then. So now we've built some rapport, and then we might say something like this, particularly if it's an important thing. And by the way, all of them are, right? So I might say to you, Terry, again, thanks so much for, uh, for seeing me today. I really do appreciate, I appreciate it. I was actually thinking about our meeting uh, last night. And I wrote down some ideas that will help us get the most out of our time together today. Is it okay if I just share those things with you? Absolutely. By the way, that's exactly what everybody says. Right? Now, I could actually show them to you because I told you something. I said I wrote them down. And I will have written them down and I can show them you, right? But, so I'll say this. Well, Terry, first of all, thank you. There's really just four things that we're going to do. First thing is, I'm going to get your answers, right? I'm going to get your answers to some really important questions. And all I'm going to do is listen. And I'm going to, I hope, listen more than anyone's ever listened. Right? In fact, probably be taking some notes right, as we go through it. Now, by the way, do you notice something? I haven't said I'm going to ask you questions. I've said I'm going to get your yeah. answers to some questions. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some suggestions based on your answers as to how we might solve this issue, whatever that issue is. Right? Thirdly, I'm going to get your reaction to those suggestions. And Terry, is this sounding okay so far? And by the way, of course it's sounding okay so far. You know why? Because Terry now has structure. Terry knows exactly where this thing is going. She's comfortable. Does everybody see that? Yep. She knows. I'm being open. I'm being transparent. And then point number four down here is this. And Terry, if everything seems to be going okay, then what we might do is plan to take the next steps, which might be us deciding to do business together. It might be us to have another meeting or whatever. So Terry, just, just quickly, how does that all sound to you? By the way, how many of us would say, if, I was on the, if you were doing that the other way around, how many, of us would, how many of us can see that if we did that tomorrow, the people who we meet, for, particularly for the first time, and you said, well, how, how's all that sound, what would they say? Sounds fantastic. Sounds fantastic. It's totally different. By the way, how much time do you think this would save? A lot of time. And guess what you're always going to do at the end? You're always going to ask for the next step. Next step. I used to teach accountants how to do this. And accountants, they, they, they yeah, used to go in and they would actually read it because they're accountants, you know. And I remember one time I was in there sort of, uh, what, what would you call it, like monitoring the accountant. And at one time, I swear to you, the accountant, the, way the, the prospect said to the accountant, hey, you should have asked me that question. Right there. On the thing. Seriously, he did. So, so prospects really get into this thing. Is that, tell me, show me your hands quickly if that's useful. Yes. yes. And it's a great example of how you break everything into processes. And by the way, when you come to sell the business, right, guess what you're able to say? There, there's, we have a process for everything and when you have a process for everything your business is infinitely more valuable that's a lie it's significantly more valuable than a business without a process if you doubt that go and check what people pay from McDonald's franchise as opposed to Joe's burger <laughs> you know what I'm saying right 
And it's all about processes. Yes, everybody get that? Okay, so, um, and, and by the way, when you look at all of those processes, one other thing you need to bear in mind is that this process, which is the last thing in the sequence. So this could be uh, how people are looking at the, uh, the website. This could be how you invoice things. And by the way, when you invoice things or when you issue statements, do any of us issue statements and that sort of thing? You call them statements? What's interesting is when I see most statements, I see this on the bottom of the statement. I, I see this. I see current 30, 60, 90. Yes? yes? What have you just told that person that you will accept? 90 days. Does everybody see that? Yes. So why on earth do we do this? Hello? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because it's the way it's always been done. Yeah, but when you start to think about these things, you will really do it differently. Okay, we've got to go quickly. <laughs> So you look at these processes and then you start to ask some questions. So you pull out the process and you ask yourself, is this how an inspiring enterprise would do this? Let's check that phone thing again. Hello? No. Because it, by the way, someone said to me in England, a guy called Nigel Bottrell, he said, Paul, I love this question, but there's an actually a better question. And I said, oh, yes, Nigel, what's the better question? He said, a better question is, is this how the world's best company would do it? I love that question. Is this how the world's best framing company, which you're not really, but, you know, <laughs> is, is this the way the best vintage thing, on, you know, would do it? Is this the way the best coaching company would do it? Is this the way the best design company would do it? Is this the way, does everybody get it? Is this the way that everything else would do it? And so anyway, and, you just, and now all of a sudden you get, by the way, just to illustrate how detailed you may want to be, we have a real estate company that's just doing amazing things and they, they have broken their business down into 421 processes. And they look at those processes every seven months. <laughs> Very interesting and it's just amazing. And we think, oh my God, that's restricting people. No, it's not. It's giving people the, op the opportunity to be as creative as they like, but really following a process. Did, did we see it? It's, it's, kind of, it's like freeing to have these processes. So you now add colors. Is that making sense, Charlotte? Yeah, you should. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> and by the, well, anyway, yes, and of course, when anyone else joins you now, guess what? You can say this is the process. This is the way we answer the phone. This is the way we do all of those sorts of things. And so now you're asking the same question all the way through. And now guess what happens? You get all these connected moments. They don't go, oh, wow, what an amazing way to answer the phone. Oh, wow, what an amazing way to begin a sales process. They don't do that. But at some level they get, this is like a connected moment. And pretty soon they don't know why they say that, but they go, wow, this is an inspiring company. Does everybody see that? It's just the, the level of detail in the processes. Now, I know some of you have seen this before, but let me just show you one just for fun. Oh, no, you, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, it reminds me I miss home. Oh, dear. <laughs> so once again, it's about connection, but don't think about it as connection. Think about it as moments of connection, moments of connection. Think about, for example, what happens at the end of this meeting with that person. What do you leave them with? Do you say, thank you, great to see you? Or do you leave them with that card I showed you today? Do you, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Just think about all of those things. Now, we do need to be quick, 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 quick. So moments of connection. So connection is where it's at and all about the huge power of small. So now I know some of you have seen this, but this is designed to add some light into our evening. Just quickly, where is that? Talking of small, some of you know, go ahead, yell it out. New Zealand, New Zealand yes. How many people in New Zealand? Three. Three, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's true, because they've all moved to Australia. So, <laughs> so the answer is 4.214 million to be exact. So if I showed you a website that has 50% of those 4 million people visiting that website, then you'd be impressed with that number, right? Because 50%, wow. So let's have a look at it. Here's the one, it's called One Day. Now it is a deal site and I don't like deal sites as a general rule and it is a trend that is ebbing. You know, that's why Groupon put off 30,000 people last year. 
So anyway, but this is the thing. So how did I get to hear about this? Well, a lady called Jill, spelled with a G actually, Jill, she lives in a place called Christchurch, and she called me, well, she didn't call me, she sent me an email. The email said this, you'd never believe what happened to me today. Now, that's the kind of email that you open. Now, I'm going to change one word in the next line. She didn't say the word gallons. She said the word litre. But if I said litre, many of us would not understand what the hell she's talking about. She's talking about a unit of measurement. Like, <laughs> okay. So, so the next line said, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. And the next line said, I bought 60 gallons. Actually, it was 60 litres. I bought 60 litres of paint. That was the email. You go, what is that? And then she said, see the attachment. Let me show you the attachment. By the way, would you be interested in how these companies get two million people to visit them in a country of four? Yeah, just think about what that means. Right? So for example, here in, uh, in Miami, there's, what is it, 289,000 people in this particular area. So that's like 180, you know, you get the number, right? So here's how it's done. So when she orders the, the paint, she gets this back in the mail. Thank you for your order with One Day. Your product has been painstakingly removed from our shelves, the dust wiped free and carefully placed inside its packaging. It's gone through a number of checks and all of them with contamination-free sterilized gloves. A hush echoed through the 100 staff as the final tape locked down the packaging. I love this. We all linked arms and swayed in time. <laughs> except for Luke, who was swinging his hips in the opposite direction to everyone else, and sung the one-day version of, by the way, how many of us can remember every word of I'm leaving on a jet plane? <laughs> yes, that sort of, yeah. <laughs> okay, trivia, who sang it? Peter, Paul, and Mary, yeah, very good. Okay, real tears were shed by some of us who are still coming to terms with the fact that the product has left our building for good. If the suspense is too much, didn't you love this thing? Yeah. It's just, it's just stunning. Um, and what about this one? If it's not showing up straight away, don't panic. It'll just be that, you know, we're, we're so keen to get it to you. We trust you've enjoyed your one day shopping experience and know that your package will be with you very soon. Yes, that would be better if it said your 60 liters of paint. I agree with that. Um, check out tomorrow's deals at 12 noon. We'll start, I <laughs> love that line. We will start working on Luke's rhythm while we wait to see you again soon. Thanks heaps from the team at One Day. Last time.